<laughs> the sound of summer, right? There it is. They weren't expected to kick up the band until next year, but the loud trill of those cicadas is beginning to sprout up in Chicago and other parts of the South. Dr. Jean Kritsky, the Dean of Behavioral and Natural Sciences at Mount St. Joseph University in Cincinnati, joins us now. Thanks so much for being with us, Doc. Glad to be here. So why this early arrival of these noisy bugs? Well, we're not going to see as many uh, you'll, like you'll see next year. Uh, this is going to be like an hors d'oeuvre for what we can expect <laughs> in 2024. But cicadas sometimes get their clocks wrong. And we oftentimes see cicadas come out one year early. And that's what we're expecting in the greater Chicago area with brood 13 cicadas. And then we also have in southern Illinois uh, an emergence of, of brood 19, a 13-year cicada. And the last time these two broods emerged during the same year, Thomas Jefferson was president of oh, the United wow. States. Wow. So we have history being made this year. Dr. Kritsky, uh, what does this say, if anything, uh, about uh, the climate, this early arrival, uh, about the climate? Is there anything to be concerned about? Or as you said, does this just happen from time to time where they get their clocks wrong? Well, they can get their clocks wrong, especially uh, if we had some warm winters. Uh, cicadas mark the years by counting the fluid flow in the trees. When the leaves come out in the spring, the cicada nymphs and underground can detect that from the roots. And apparently that's how they are counting. We don't know how they remember what year it is. But uh, if uh, there's been a mild winter and uh, they some of the cicadas detect an extra fluid flow, or that can cause them to come out a year early. Uh, since Chicago is well known for early cicadas. You had a large number come out in the year 2020, four years ahead of schedule, which occurs if there's been a warm uh, uh, winter uh, during the first five years of their life. This seems like it could be the making of a horror film. It really does. Uh, so scientists and nature enthusiasts, you know, they track their arrival. Why do so many people make a hobby of this? Well, it's uh, especially during COVID, we had we, a lot of people were hiking. And now when they went outside to hike, they had the, the Cicada Safari app, which is a free app to map cicadas. Uh, they had that with them. They, they were participating in a citizen science project, which uh, uh, all told, in 2021, when Brood 10 emerged, we received over a half a million photographs. Oh, really? Cool. Let's talk a little bit more about that app before we let you go. Um, everyone can get on, in on the fun of tracking these little critters, and it also helps scientists, too. Am I right? That is correct. In fact, uh, the app is called Cicada Safari. It's free. Uh, the data is not sold. What you do is you can download it from the App Store or Google Play. And when you go outside and uh, hike, if you see a cicada nymph for an adult, you take its picture uh, with your with the metadata, the longitude, latitude, date, and time. We can then map this uh, carefully, and that's what's important. Uh, this year is really kind of interesting because scientists have never really looked for cicadas when they're not supposed to come up. Last year we did that, and we had 400 locations in North America having one or two or three or 30 cicadas occurring in their area. So uh, this is an opportunity to help us sort of fill the gap. It's not going to be a whole new brood. You're going to see more next year, but it will it'll be a little precursor for what we expect, but it'll also help us sort of fill in the dots. Well, my daughter, my, my soon to be three year old daughter loves looking for the cicada shells. Put her so on the job. Get that. That's app. right. We're going to get the app. Dr. Jean Kritsky, thank you so much. Thank you.